Open Doors to the Demons, Part 1. Many times Christians get attacked, tormented, and oppressed by the devil because they have opened a door. The Bible makes it very clear. Do not give room to the devil. Do not give place to the devil. I've had an incident one time where I stepped on the territory of a German shepherd. He was on the leash and he attacked me. You know, he always barked at me and I knew how far his leash can get. And so I would provoke him to anger. But one day I wasn't very smart. And so I thought that he was gone. His uh, family and owner removed him. So I went and stuck my head into his little house. And I didn't know he was sleeping behind the little house. So he attacked me and he no longer barked at me. He bit piece of flesh off of my flesh. The doctor, the owner of that German Shepherd had to stitch me up because she was a doctor. And so I learned that they're very important. You know, dogs, mean dogs, bark at everyone. But they can only bite those who step on their territory. So is the devil. You know, he can torment, he can, excuse me, tempt every, any person. But he torments those who come on his territory and his territory is sin. His territory is, and I'm going to mention those things that I believe are the territory that give room to the enemy to not just tempt you, but to torment you. As God does nothing without faith, Satan does nothing without sin. Please understand that. God does nothing without faith. Satan does nothing without sin. It's usually some kind of a disobedience that opens the door to demonic activity. You know, your disobedience and maybe you falling into sin might not cost you salvation, but it can open the door to a demonic influence in your life. So the first open door, the first common open door to demonic influence in the person's life is occult. Occult literally means hidden from view. It's something hidden, secret, and mysterious. It could be astrology, witchcraft, black arts, fortune telling, black magic, white magic, a Ouija board, spiritism, horoscopes or talking to the dead. It can also include partaking in false religions directly or indirectly worshiping Satan. In the Old Testament, God made it very clear. He said, when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found anyone among you who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or the one who practices witchcraft soothsayer or the one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures conjures spells or medium or a spiritist or the one who calls on the dead for all who do these things are an abomination to the lord and because of these abominations that the lord your god drives them out before you pretty much god just told them why these people are being removed from their land because of practice of these things. These are not just injustice, though it's bad. These are not just stealing bad, lying really bad, adultery really bad. When people go onto the other side of the spiritual realm by seeking help from the dark side or in ignorance, which many of us do, not just because we're hungry for the supernatural, but because we're just ignorant. Satan does not care if you're ignorant or if you do it willfully, he will attack you. Some people go to look for help from witch doctors and other things. And they might even experience healing because Satan will give you with right hand, but with the left hand, he will take what your life depends on. If you practice a cult, you need to repent. If you dambled into that stuff, if you have things like that in your house, you need to throw them away. Why? You don't need demon stuff in your life. That's the first open door. Second open door is uh, demonic objects. The power, whether it's God's power or demonic power, flows through four things. It flows through people, it flows through places, it can flow through animals, and it can flow through objects. For example, God used Moses' rod, the water of Jordan, the saliva of Jesus, handkerchief of Paul, to bring supernatural miracles. When Israel entered the promised land, Achan was destroyed because he took what was accursed. Demonic objects are books on magic, charms, dream catchers, Ouija boards, tarot cards, horoscopes, and etc. They can bring demonic influence into your personal, into your personal life. That's why Paul went to, went to Ephesus in Acts chapter 19 and verse 19, it says the following. 
Also, many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. They counted up the value of them and it was totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Books on magic, dream catchers, horoscopes are a wide open door to a demonic torment in your life. Also on a side note, if you have had a relationship with someone and it ended badly, by you keeping articles, gifts, jewelry, love notes from them, sometimes they could be an open door to a soul tie to that person and it could keep you from getting married in the future. And the best way is to take all of that stuff from that person and to get rid of it so that you can be free from that person and move forward in your God-given destiny. Some of you, you need to take an inventory of your house. What is on your bookshelf? What kind of stuff is hanging on your walls? What kind of things is hanging over your ceiling when you're sleeping? Supposed to catch bad spirits. Nonsense. That stuff is demonic. Throw that away. There's only one protection and that is the blood of Jesus, not a dream catcher. Number three, third way that the demons, that opens the door for demons is bitterness. Demons enter through rejection, abuse, trauma, rape, and molestation. Bob Larson said the following, he says, a cult is the main door for demons in other countries. But in a Western world, that door is abuse. So many people are abused at the young age, but so many more are rejected in their mother's womb. Some are born as bastard children, meaning they are not born to a father and to a mother, but they were born out of infidelity. And that could put a seed of rejection in the child. I've dealt with people who were being delivered from a rebellion, but in reality, they had to remove the root of bitterness because of the root of rejection that they got in their womb because their parents did not want them. Nobody wanted them. In fact, some, wanted to be, some parents tried to abort them and it planted the seed of rejection that they battled with all their life until that spirit was totally removed by God. The scripture says, repent therefore of your wickedness and pray to God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven to you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Acts chapter 8 verse 22 and 23. Apostle Peter looks at Simon, the sorcerer, who just got baptized and confessed the name of Jesus, but came and asked Peter so he can pay for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Peter prophetically looks at him and says, I see you poisoned with bitterness and bound by iniquity. See the connection? He was bound by iniquity because he was poisoned by bitterness. Bitterness is a root. It's a poisonous root. See, betrayal is what people do to you. Bitterness is what you do to you. Betrayal is what happens outside of you. Bitterness is what happens inside of you. And that, say, that the devil uses as a door to enter into a person's life and torment them. I know people may say, well, I have a reason to be bitter. You don't know what they did. If you say that, Satan will say back to you and say, well, I have a reason to hold on to you because you gave me a door. If you want to remove your reason for staying bitter, God will remove the enemy of bitterness and torment over your life. In Matthew 18 verse 34, it says the following, and his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. It speaks of a man who was forgiven of an enormous debt he refused to forgive someone who owed him very little. He was thrown where? Torturers. Now he was a forgiven man. So people say sometimes, oh, you got forgiveness from God. You can never have, you know, torment, demonic torment. Yeah, you can have a demonic torment if you choose to live in unforgiveness. Even if they didn't deserve, forgiveness is a gift. You never deserve. Nobody ever deserves forgiveness. And people who hold on to their bitterness, I want to remind you, it's like drinking poison, hoping somebody else to die from it. It's like setting yourself on fire, hoping somebody else gets burned by it. My friend, bitterness, hurt, and that is hurting nobody but you. And the worst part, the enemy has an access and he can torment your life because of that. I've seen and heard people who have been delivered when they forgave, who were healed after that, 
of chronic back pains, chronic arthritis, after they were delivered from the spirit of bitterness. Maybe you were abused, God forbid, molested, taken advantage, on, taken advantage by sexually. And you probably have every reason to be mad and angry. But look to Jesus. When he was being hurt, physically abused and killed. He didn't revile, he didn't curse, and he didn't threaten. He forgave. The people he forgave didn't even know they were wrong. Because when he forgave, he says they don't know what they're doing. Maybe the people who you need to forgive will never ask you for apology. You don't need to wait for apology for you to be free because forgiveness is setting a prisoner free. And then finding out that prisoner was you. So release that person and God can release you. The fourth open door to demons is sex outside of marriage. Sex is not just a physical act, it's also a spiritual matter as well. We must understand is that condoms can protect people from sexual transmitted diseases. They cannot protect people from sexually transmitted demons. Demons are transferred through sex. The Bible says, do you not know he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two he says, shall become one flesh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 16. That tells me through sex, there is a transference that happens of spirits. You can pick up somebody's demon through sex. In fact, many testimonies of people who are in the demonic realm tell you that they would go to nightclubs to initiate other people into the kingdom of darkness through their sperm and through a sexual relationship, which is one of the many reasons you should not have sex outside of marriage. Because it will not only protect you from sexual diseases, it will protect you from sexual demons that you end up living with, being tormented by for the rest of your life. I remember praying, in fact, not very far from what I'm standing for a young man who slept with the witch and the demon entered him. Violent demon eventually was cast out. And so it's, it's true, you can get a demon through sex. And the last one in this lesson that we're going to share that opens the door to a demonic influence and torment is abortion. When we commit injustice against others, it brings a curse. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 18 and 19, Cain was under a curse when he murdered his brother. Abortion is a murder and it brings a curse. I've seen people who after committing abortion no longer live the same. One particular person, I remember praying for deliverance. She committed abortion and then she, of course, vowed she'll never do that again and then tried to pay God back for that sin. But she was plagued with the, literally a demon of heaviness for the rest of her life. The next five years, she was doing things that were so horrible, I can't even mention here. And after she was delivered, it's like, it's like something was lifted because abortion can open doors to a demonic, torment and demonic influence. Abortion is not unpardonable sin. You can receive forgiveness and you can close the door to a demonic influence and experience life and eventually even meet that baby in heaven. But until then, you must experience deliverance. In the next lesson, we will look at the next open doors to a demonic influence.